Okay, so episode three of our how to win over dot 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 series. And today we're focusing on field marketing. So for a marketing operations team, field marketing is you know, one of your important customers, I would call them, a team that, you know, real, you know, looks to your team for guidance on a myriad of things to help them do their job better. Field marketing works closely with sales. They usually own more of the event strategy. Um, and now more and more taking on uh, campaigns running digitally since a lot of the channels that they normally use, like in-person events, um, can't really be leveraged anymore. So they're looking to online. So right now, more than ever, field marketing is be working closely with the marketing operations team. So here are five ways you can win over your field marketing team, but also just work with them better. You know, mm-hmm. it, it, they're going to be asking things of you, but when you guys really work in lockstep with each other um, and create a, a system and a process to help scale their programs, that's when, you know, you'll really see results there and and also um, not get frustrated by all the requests. So um, do you want to dive in the first thing, Charlie? Sure. So as a marketing operations person, you're obviously the closest person to data. And uh, like all other teams, and like we've talked about in other videos, um, trying to please the sales team and CMO, giving people good data and access to data so they can help make decisions is really important. And that's especially important for the field marketing team. So a lot of times field marketing team is going to be broken out by region. Mm-hmm. So trying to regionalize that data, showing them your final data by region, campaign um, performance data by region, attribution data by region, and especially pipeline data by region. A lot of times the field market is going to be working really closely with the sales team. Mm-hmm. And they are pretty responsible for, like all of us, responsible for creating and nurturing pipeline. Um, but because they have that really close relationship with sales, giving them insight into pipeline so they can run pipeline acceleration programs and also trying to flag uh, different regions that might be having pipeline problems or different reps within their region that might be having pipeline problems can be really powerful for them to be able to generate and create the right programs to help influence and create pipeline. Totally. Um, That's something that I've used before. And I think that is when a field marketing team can really be nimble um, as they work closely with their sales team, but also can be that source of data for the sales team to say, hey, you know, you're lacking pipeline um, for two quarters from now. What can I do now for you so you don't get to that quarter and, um, you know, not hit your number? So, yeah, super important. And then more tactically, they're going to want to, you might be providing campaign performance data for people like the, the whole team in mm-hmm. general, but they're going to want to know how well their campaigns are performing. They're going to want to know what kind of email subject lines might be working in their region. They're going to want to know the specifics mm-hmm. around what they're doing and being able to have a dashboard or a place like in your quarterly deck or something that's going to be able to show them their specific region. Totally. Okay. So number two, um, is all about training and providing templates so that you can kind of create a self-service model for field, for field marketing. Um, this works really well on the demand gen side too, but for field marketers, I think who don't normally have the backgrounds of using systems, now is the time to invest some time into training them. Um, so kind of understanding the basics of market automation. Um, Charlie mentioned this, but not only is it good for them to understand the tool and to use it, but also even if they're not going to be setting up their programs, it's really valuable because they can see like what's possible. Mm-hmm. And so when they're developing their campaign ideas, they're like, oh, I know I can do this in Marketo, or I can then hook this up to this. Then they're really going to you know, think creatively on how they can best set up an ABM program um, that you know has a multi-channel approach and is really going to be effective in getting into that target account. Um, But then selfishly for marketing ops folks, like if you do train them on the tool and give them templates where they can just go in and create a webinar or go in and create an event program, that's not work that your team then has to do. You can create a system where you are, you know, reviewing it, um, doing QA, then launching the emails or anything that is tied to it. 
but they feel like they have control over the programs and really can execute. And I think mm -hmm. right now, since um, that in-person element has been taken away from their responsibilities, um, where we're not doing in-person events, it's even more important that they then have something to do and can provide value and using your program templates within your market automation platform, I think is super key. Um, this is really easy to scale as well if you use Marketo. Um, also on the training point, I think along with the, is uh, training like a one time is just having a um, resource for the field marketing team to really check in with um, marketing ops and I used to run office hours mm -hmm. in, in past roles. Um, you know, I think I even had them when we worked at Jive together. And um, one of the the most um, well-attended group to the office hours was our field marketing team because they were, you know, I created that self-service model. They were creating their programs, but then they maybe were like, well, I actually want to do this. How do I do this? Or um, I'm looking for this type of reporting and giving them that one time where they can ask you those questions also made it so that I can be a resource to them, but not constantly be slacking people left and right and sucking up all my time when I'm focusing on other projects. Yeah. Okay. Number three. Yeah. Number three. So focusing on segmentations, obviously part of what, what Chrissy was just talking about, um, templatization and helping them across campaign execution, segmentation is really important. I feel like every time, every campaign that ends up having lots of back and forth and just a lot of drama, it's always around the list. Oh, right? yeah. It's always so hard to, to get a list, especially when you're trying to get it by region and, and they don't really have insight into how many, you know, the number of key personas they have within that region or the amount of account, uh, contacts under the target accounts within that region and things like that. And it turns into a nightmare and they get surprised when they're trying to get people to an event and then they've only got a list of like 20 people to email. Yes. Turns into a nightmare. So being taking the, uh, the first step before even they're coming to you on developing that list for that specific campaign, being proactive and then building that list, building the segmentations, whether mm -hmm. you're whatever marketing automation platform that you've got and getting it ready for them. And it's not just as, it's not as simple as just thinking, okay, I need a list of everyone in New York for my New York or my East Coast mm -hmm. uh, film marketing person. Then there might be different intricacies or different nuances based on each region. So for example, in New York, then there might have been more, your company might have a more heavy focus on finance mm -hmm. in, you know, in the Bay area, they might have a more heavy focus on tech. So the type of personas and the type of people that you're going after in each region, region might be different. Mm -hmm. And you know, you might have other ways to, you know, build those segmentations with different fields in your marketing automation and CRM, but making sure you take that into consideration. So when you're able, when you are creating that campaign, and when you're building it out, building out that program in Marketo or, or whatever, whatever else, you're able to really deliver that quickly. Mm -hmm. And then the other benefit is they then can then get insight. So creating a dashboard in Salesforce or lists in Marketo or whatever, just to be able to show them how many people they have in their region in each persona. So then they're not surprised when it comes to campaign execution mm -hmm. time. And you say, okay, this is how many people. Then they can be proactive and go, oh God, I didn't realize I only have, you know, 25 people in this persona in my region and target accounts. I need to go and do some contact acquisition and work with sales to build that out. Mm -hmm. So that just making sure that you, you've got those segmentations ready for that quick campaign execution. And so they, they really know what they've got to work mm -hmm. with in their region. Yeah, and I think another added layer on that is also being able to also then see how many people in their target accounts that they have. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's super important. And along with like the templates for the programs, once you have these segmentations, you can do some really crafty, cool things where it's kind of like a choose your adventure list building. It's like you have yeah. like, you know, your regional smart list. And on top of that, you have your persona and, um, you know, marketing ops is going to have the you know, the foresight to know, okay, if I'm running a regional list, I know all the zip codes to include, like what data to use. If a field market tries to go and build them, mm -hmm. so likely there could be, um, you know, some oops, uh, you know, mistakes there, including the wrong region. So giving them those standardized um, list templates or, or kind of like filters to use, I think is super important. For sure, especially if you're using enrichment tools and you have 
you know, or using multiple enrichment tools, you have, might have multiple ways to be able to filter on where someone is. And then inferred information and account level information versus lead or contact. So it can get very complicated for them. So making sure that you have it uh, readily available is very important. Totally. All right, we're on the fourth thing. Mm -hmm. So um, online events, well, and just events in general, but you know, right now we're really focused on online events and marketing ops is gonna be you know, really focused on um, how they can best scale those because most of the time they're creating the programs, but also if you're using those templates, you're creating a process for them to be self-service you then can create a process for your um, online events. And a big part of that is what tools you use. Um, you know, if you don't have an online event tool, right now you're probably looking at some and marketing ops, you know, you wanna be part of that selection process. Um, sometimes this happens a little bit backwards where the field marketer chooses their tool and then goes, hey, marketing ops, you need to implement this. And it might not even been the right tool. They don't have like the, you know, the knowledge or background to even know what questions to ask in that um, demo. And so if you know that online events is going to be somewhere where you're going to focus, try and get in there early, you know, um, you know, lend your hand, say, hey, do you want help with that decision making process? I can be on the demos. I can vet it out. And that'll be super helpful when then it falls onto your plane, you know, that you need to actually roll it out for the team. Um, and then the second thing to that is uh, make sure that they work for the team. So, you know, d figure out what the goals are with your events, figure out like what that process is going to look like, what's going to be that end user experience, and then make sure that is nailed down um, and then integrated into your system. So most of these tools integrate into your market automation platform um, or your CRM, making sure that you're capturing all the engagement insights that you can. Um, and, but also have the basics nailed down, like getting your registrants, attendees in there, making sure they're getting their info for the event. And um, so everything's seamless. So super important, make sure that online event experience um, operationally is nailed down be a, and be a part of that whole process. Um, and then for in-person events, I think, you know, being part of that same thing um, once we do get back to it and go, you know, really focusing again on that end user experience. And then even one little added thing you can do there too is events are super important um, for the sales team. So you can add a calendar into like your CRM for the sales team so they know exactly when these virtual or in-person events are. Okay. Last one. Last one. Um, so just like how um, the online event technology is important, so is direct mail. So for all the reasons I listed out for you know, being part of that POC for the online event tool, I think it's also important to be part of that direct mail tool selection. And I say that because if you ever tried to scale direct mail without a tool, it's so impossible. It's, it's, I've it's, tried. We've all tried. <laughs> and I think that was okay. And Actually to, like physically packaging it up for yourself. Oh, and totally. Yeah. And I think that if you are low on budget and you're testing out direct mail campaigns, mm -hmm. go that route, you know, try it. But then if you, if it is going to be a big channel for you, you need to invest in the tools to do that. They have the warehouses. They make sure that your sales team can actually leverage it. You know, so like tools like Sendoso. Um, and they also have the option for online kind of mailers or gifts and then um, offline. And so, you know, figuring out what tool is best for your team, implementing it, making sure it's integrated, and then also training them on how to best use it for their program. So where can it be placed in a program? Where is it most effective? What do they need to keep in mind? Like, are the addresses right? Um, and then that, then how can they then train their sales team to best use it as part of their process as well? So direct mail, super powerful for field marketers, um, especially right now where you can maybe send a digital gift and, and, um, you know, be part of that whole process and make sure that, um, it's all operationally sound. All right. All right. So that was five recap. things. <laughs> yeah. Quick recap. So the first one is make sure you have your regional reporting down, making sure that they're able to access it. It's the right metrics and right data that they're looking for. Next one, number two, making sure that you, they're well-trained and mm -hmm. you've got everything that you can templatize so they're able to get in there and have fast campaign execution. Mm -hmm. and the third one, uh, make sure they've got the right segmentations in there for that fast campaign execution, but also so they can get ahead of it and know where there might be gaps within their region. And then the last two, 
where online event tool, obviously massively important now. Everyone in marketing operations has probably ha implemented one in the last in the last couple of months, uh, e even a second or third one, or, or at least has been a heavy user of the existing one. And then also direct mail, another important channel for field marketers. Make sure you've got all of the processes and the tool implemented properly. Yeah. So those are five ways to win over field marketing. Um, you know, soon they'll be singing your praises, which is what we want for you marketing ops folks. All departments or people you work with should be really understanding your value and that'll just help further elevate um, this department, which is our end goal with this whole series. So look out for the next one for um, five ways to win over dot, dot, dot. And we'll see you then. See you then.